Hey friends, Ryan Frank, welcome to the Daily Coffee Chat. Good morning, Facebook. Good morning, YouTube. Good morning, podcast, wherever you're catching the coffee chat. So glad to have you with me. If you have something you'd like to talk about or a question, please text the number right there, 833-792-6372. Just had a great Kids Matter uh, team meeting with some of our team talking about some of the cool things happening here at Kids Matter, like Global Kid Men Day, happening August 8th. There's a lot of momentum going into August the 8th. Hope you've checked out globalkidmenday.com. We also have been every day adding new resources to kidsmatter.com. I want to let you know about a couple things that are brand new that you might miss. And that is, these were just added yesterday. They are interactive countdown videos. Now, I think we all know what countdown videos are where you're watching the kids watch the screen and it's counting down. I know there are some fun countdown timer videos where you watch some extreme sports and stuff like that, but interactive countdowns. We had these made, there are four of them. They are just what they communicate. The kids don't sit and stare, they actually get up and move or they talk to the person next to them. They're, they're all interactive. So this one is called, Who's the Fastest? Okay, this is a three minute countdown. Let me show you just like a 30 second clip of that. Okay, so they're gonna pick a friend. Is that all that we get on that one? Okay, we need to tweak that one because you don't actually even get to see how it works. So we need to tweak that preview so you actually get to see how it works. Um, we have a tongue twister one um, where the kids try to do these tongue twisters and compete with the kids that are around them. Um, follow the instructions. Can they do what the captain or the soldier on the screen instructs them to do? Um, my favorite things count that interactive countdown. This is a fun one. This is a shorter one. This is a two minute. Right, we all have favorites. Brandon, you're ready to talk about your favorites. I'm just going to punch you stuff on the screen. Talking about your favorite. And it punches through all these tell. Now, who's the fastest? They actually, you don't get to see it with the preview video. We're going to make a tweak on that. But some of the things are like the fastest to, um, I feel like there's one that's even like run around the room, although it may not be run around the room. It's actually get up and move. So check out these interactive countdowns. Um, they're pretty fun. It's a brand new addition to the website kidsmatter.com. Today I wanna to talk to you about culture, culture. Now, a lot of times we hear the word culture and when we think of organizational culture, we immediately think of corporate culture, um, the organizational culture of a church. Um, but you know, in your ministry, whether you oversee the entire children's ministry or you are an early childhood director, preteen director, whatever, whatever you do, um, culture matters. And as the leader, you set the tone for the culture of your ministry. Culture answers the question, this is how we do things, okay? Um, the, it, culture answers the question, um, this is how people respond to how we do things, we all have probably worked or been in environments where the culture really stinks. We also have been, hopefully, in environments where the culture is really high and it's upbeat and there is good momentum and there's good morale and there's good community. But having a healthy culture never happens by default. It never happens on its own. You as the leader have to drive that culture. Now, yesterday I reached out to Andrew Brooks. Andrew um, is a friend of mine. He's an elementary pastor in Georgia. And he also has contributed some of the best-selling games uh, or videos that we have on Kids Matter, like 
the Cool Cats and Karaoke and others. And I said, Andrew, why don't you jump on uh, coffee chat with me tomorrow? I want to talk about culture. And he said, Ryan, to tell you the truth, I'm so new in this role, I could talk about it, but you really need to talk to Tucker that works with me here at the church, our preteen pastor, because he works so hard at creating this culture in his ministry that, that he said is unlike anything I've ever seen. So I reached out to Tucker and Tucker's going to join me. Tucker, why don't you jump on here? Tucker, you um, here's a connection to Tucker, it's Andrew Brooks and Corey Jones. Now y'all know who Corey Jones is, the co-host of the Kids Matter podcast and a frequent visitor of the Daily Coffee Chat. Um, Tucker and Corey have worked together for several years now. Tucker, thanks for joining me on the Coffee Chat. Yeah, absolutely, thanks for having me, and yeah, thanks so to Andrew you. Brooks for the recommendation. You Man, know, Andrew, speak, not, we're setting the bar high. I mean, Andrew's like you've never met a guy like this when it comes to culture. So he set the bar high, yeah. Tucker. I'm just warning you. Um, oh. How awesome to get paid to be a preteen pastor. Mm -hmm. Preteens yeah. are awesome, aren't they? Yeah, so I'm actually a junior high pastor. So um, nice. Like okay. there's, there's, some, there's some overlap, um, but yeah, some of the eighth graders love that phase of life of junior high. Yeah, you know, don't you think they're, I mean, they're at that age where they, they still want to have fun. They still want to get the Nerf guns out. Mm -hmm. But they also, there's, they have a lot of kid in them, but they're also ready to start having some serious conversations, aren't they? Yeah, I mean, the biggest question, the conversation that junior hires have is, who am I? And that's such a great opportunity for us as, as the church to share that um, their identity in Christ with them. And um, they're still malleable, they're still moldable. So that's an awesome opportunity for us as a church to come in in such a vital, important phase oh, of life. Vital. Because if somebody doesn't speak into that and remind them who they are in Christ and what God says, how God identifies them, um, they're, they're going to pick up their cues everywhere else. Mm -hmm. they? yeah. Their friends and um, what social media says they are. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, you've got such a great job. Tucker, we're talking about culture today. Um, yeah. Tell us what, what are some of the things you do especially with your volunteers to create a culture where, um, you know, there's just a real sense of community and good morale. And, and before, before you tell some of the practical things of what you do, do you agree with me that it doesn't happen by default? It's got, it's something as a leader, you've got to really be intentional about. Mm -hmm. Oh, a hundred percent. I was uh, talking with our summer intern um, this morning and I said, if you're not intentional with the decision you make, you drift and you never get to a, pl a good place when you drift or you never get to where yeah. you want to be when you drift. So yeah. 100 percent agree with that. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So tell us, what are you doing to build good culture with your team? So I really do four things. Um, the first one it actually starts with me is I never ask my team to do something that I'm not willing to do myself because I believe that we as a leader that we need to set that servant leadership example before anything. And if you're asking your team to do something you're not willing to do yourself, you're not a leader, you're a boss. And Good. in ministry, it's really that negative connotation of boss and you really want to be a leader and actually step into uh, the action, actually do it yourself. So I never ask my team to do something I'm not willing to do myself. That's I number one. If, if that means staying late, if it means stacking chairs. Oh yeah. Means... I'm right there. I'm right there with them. Yeah. Have you ever thought about, I've, I've, I've talked about this before, how much wealth I would have if I just had a nickel for every chair I've ever stacked in my ministry. <laughs> I mean, dude, in a quarter for every table loaded. removed, we'd oh be rich gosh, dudes. Dude. Yeah, dude, we would be loaded. <laughs> we would be. I love that. So never ask your team to do something you're not willing to do yourself mm -hmm. and then just jump in there and, and hey, let them see you cleaning the bathrooms, cleaning up the mess, mm -hmm. sticking around late, doing the dirty work. What else? Um, so number two is I give them a vision. So uh, someone's not going to follow if you don't know where you're going yourself. Um, your team loves to follow you when you have a destination set, when you have 
hey, point A, but this is point B where we're going, and this is how we're getting there. And, and your team doesn't want to drift. So we as a leader need to set the visions like, hey, this is where we're going to go to. So this is something that we can actually strive for, work towards, and that we can have a goal in front of us to obtain. I love it. What's that look like practically with volunteers to cast that vision for you? Do you have meetings? Do you, um, is it just kind of as you go? I mean, you're constantly like mm -hmm. planting the seed. What's it look like? So it's, it's a big mixture of both. Um, okay. Me and our high school pastor are actually having an all team meeting July 18th. And this is where we'll lay out the entire vision of the school year. But on an individual level, um, I will have bi-monthly meetings with just our junior high team um, just to make sure we're on the same page to share that same vision that we went over in July and just to restate it so they remember and live it out. And then on a monthly basis, I'm trying, I'm, I would try to meet with leaders one-on-one, -on -one, probably about six to eight leaders from our team on a monthly basis. So I can check in and see how they're doing individually, how their life group is doing, their small group is doing, how their marriage is doing, um, and just to check in on them individually. I love it. I love it. All right, I butted in. You've got four things that you do. Let's go to number three. Uh, number three is I want to build a team where if I was out of town or say for whatever reason, I'm not the junior high pastor anymore, yeah. my team and our students wouldn't know a difference that the ministry would not be built on me, but be built on the team, on the adult leaders, on our student leaders, and that they would still run with the vision and run and own the ministry that they're a part of. I love it. I love it. Yeah, which is something that we all struggle with. And if we're not careful, um, everything can fall on us. And you just feel like you can't be gone for a week or, yeah. or it's all going to crumble and I don't have anybody to cover for me. But if you can, if you always have the mindset, um, Tucker, that I, I just want to always work myself out of a job. I want to build a team. Mm -hmm. So much of being a ministry leader, we think about as a kid's pastor or in your case, a junior high pastor, you might, might be tempted to think, well, my job is I minister to these kids, I minister to these kids, I minister to these kids. Well, you do, but, but you've got to view yourself as a team builder, that it's not all on you. Yeah, yeah part of your job is to pastor these kids, but you've got to be building a team, don't you? Mm -hmm. Yeah. The stronger the ministry, a... the str strong ministries are led by strong teams, and that's just the way mm -hmm. it works. Yeah, and the, 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 our, the way our culture is, so we're only a two-grade ministry, seventh and eighth grade, and what we want from our small group leaders is to move up into the high school ministry with their students, so okay. I'm constantly in that mindset of building the team because each year, half my team moves That's up into the high school point. ministry. That's a good point. Um, what would you say, T Tucker, to someone who is watching or listening? They're like, man, I'd love to build a team, but, but honestly... Like I'm the only one, where should I start? What would you tell somebody who's like, man, I'm a one person show right now, but you're right, I need a team. Oh, what should, should somebody like that do? So I actually heard this advice from Don Wilson. He's a, he used to be pastor, the pastor of Christ Church of the Valley out in Arizona. Yep. And he said building a staff and building um, his team was he started with people who were like him. Because the thing about it is, yeah, we need different personalities on our team. But if a majority of the personalities on our team are opposite of us, then our team's going to clash head and we're never going to see eye to eye on things. So I would say start with recruiting volunteers with leaders who are you, whether it's, hey, high energy, what, it's, if you're a logical thinker, if you're extrovert, introvert, whatever it is, your Enneagram type, your personality type, whatever it is, yeah. but start looking for those leaders who are similar to you, not the exact same person of you who are going to be that yes man, but who are similar that, to you. That's a good point. Good point. All right. And your fourth tip. My fourth tip is when a new volunteer comes to observe, they know exactly what it looks like to serve on our team and the expectations. And the way we do this is when a new volunteer comes, they come and observe a current volunteer the entire service. So they see what it's like to be a greeter, a check-in volunteer, what it's like to be in our basketball gym, what it looks like to have that small group conversation at the uh, tail end of our service. And the expectation side of things is we actually have this notebook. It's our volunteer handbook. And we give um, 
these potential volunteers of saying, hey, this is how we get from point A to point B. This is how we walk out that vision. This is our expectations. If you're on board, hey, we'd love to have you on our team. If you can't really agree on these things, if you can't um, jump on ship with us, then we would love to point you in the right direction of a ministry that would be a perfect fit for you. And we're very clear with that because we don't want volunteers who are going to be, or leaders or team, uh, a team who's going to be wishy-washy, but we want these leaders who are going to be committed, who can agree on the vision and agree how we execute the vision as well. So we let them know that on, on day one when they come and observe. I like that. A lot of times it seems like we talk, Tucker, about um, recruiting strategies and re retention strategies. And I don't know that we talk enough about how do we actually onboard volunteers. Mm -hmm. And it's easy to recruit somebody. They say, I shouldn't say it's easy to recruit somebody, but the, ten the tendency is recruit somebody, boom, throw them in and yeah. walk away. We just put them in, throw them in the room, lock, mm -hmm. you know, shut the door. But I like that idea of, of uh, shadowing or making sure they really understand. In fact, I think it's a bad idea for a, a new volunteer or a prospect or somebody that's interested in volunteering to just shadow for several weeks even to really get an understanding mm -hmm. of what's going on. And that's what we actually do is a leader shadows for two weeks because we do small yep. groups every other week. So that way they get the experience of what it's like to be in that small group environment and not in that small group environment. And then at that third week coming back, I meet with them before that Wednesday night because that's our main programming. And it's like, OK, you ready to go or you uh, want to be or you want to find a better fit. So exactly. I love it. Um, Tucker, I I'm I can't wait to get down to your church and um, hang out. I feel like I keep making more and more friends there in Car Carrollton. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Pastor Shannon's gonna be a speaker at our Global Kid Men Day. I don't know if you knew that or not. I saw that, Corey uh, sent me that last night. Yeah, um, I actually had, I'm not gonna talk about it on, the, on here, but I had a dream about Shannon tonight, <laughs> which is totally random um, and bizarre that awesome. I met him and he was this stuck up guy that like, Oh. Had, had like a security guy around him and I remember like introducing myself and I'm friends with Corey and he like blew me off and and there was more to the dream that I won't share online but um <laughs> which is totally opposite of the kind of guy that Corey's told me oh yeah a hundred percent different end of the spectrum yeah complete super awesome dude Shannon is he is Tucker you're a good man thank you for joining me on the coffee chat keep building into that team keep loving on Corey and Andrew and everybody on staff there Thanks for joining me. Yes, absolutely. Thanks for All having right. me. See you, Tucker. Yep. See you. All right. That is Tucker Music from Carrollton, Georgia. Friends of our mutual friends, and I love the I Love Kidman community, Andrew Brooks and um, Corey Jones. I love that. Uh, several great takeaways from that conversation with Tucker. Don't ask someone to do something you're not willing to do yourself. Um, always make sure that you communicate well, that people see the vision of where we're going, that you are formally doing that. And then even in casual conversations, you are doing that. Um, boy, culture matters. And you have to, as a leader, be the champion of culture. Linda Loudermilk is a, a, an active member of the I Love Kidman community. On Monday, I think it was Monday, I saw Linda's post in I Love Kid Men about this big event that you did. You did this event on this past Sunday, right, Linda? Right, right. It was actually startup. It was our first Sunday back after COVID. Nice. So. Okay. So before you tell us about the event, Linda, I think you're in Michigan, right? I am, yeah. Okay. I saw that on Facebook. Where are you at in Michigan? We're in Goodrich, Michigan. Goodrich. So we're kind of sandwiched between Flint and Detroit. Gotcha. Gotcha. Um, and boy, I mean, Michigan's been, you guys, it's been a tough, mm. it's been tough for everybody, but um, things have been interesting up in Michigan, haven't they? Yeah, it's taken a while to open up. So we've just, uh, we've just been able to get our hair cut like a week ago. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, Linda, how long have you been a part of the I Love Kid Men Facebook? Oh, boy, I don't know. A long time. I feel like you have been. Yeah. Several, long yeah. And how long have you been a children's pastor? Well, I'm not a children's pastor. I'm a children's director, but um, I've been doing this for about 40 years. 
Have you really? Yeah, long time. I, I was I began when I was a teenager. Someone asked me to help in a Sunday school class and been doing it ever since. Man, that is neat. That's neat. How long have you been at the church where you're at? Well, uh, my husband and I, uh, he's actually the children's pastor. We were at a previous okay. church that we grew up in. We were there our, our whole ministry until yeah. about four and a half years ago, our district had asked us to plan a church. And really? so for a fresh church plan of about four and a half years, and he's a senior pastor, and, and I, I'm uh, over the children's department out here. That's pretty neat. So what denomination are you part of? Nazarene. Nazarene. Okay. Yeah. Do you know Trey Brooks? Oh, very well. Do you? <laughs> very well, yes. That's neat. I think the world of Trey Brooks. Yeah. Um, we do Trey a lot of was park a... conferences together, so. Do you? Okay. Yeah. I first met Trey when he was a children's pastor in Fort Wayne, Indiana, which oh, um, just like an hour north of us. Yeah. So. Yeah. Well, okay. Tell us about this event. And well, first of all, before you tell us about the event, go to the y'all sometime next time you're on Facebook, go to the I Love Kid Men community. Just type in the search, Linda Loudermilk, L-O-U-D-E-R-M-I-L-K. You're going to see the pictures that she posted. Tell us about your event. Well, we were, we were trying to uh, think about how to start up and start off, you know, well, where people would feel, you know, safe and the kids would uh, be excited about it. So when we began to uh, think about coming back together, our church is very small. In fact, we grew fast when we were out here. So we immediately okay. went to two services and uh, the room we're in uh, actually be able to socially distance while well, we probably could get maybe 10 kids in it. So uh -huh. we began to think outside the box and thought, you know, let's run a great big tent. And that's just, uh, come up with a great theme and and we began there and so the tents outside uh i, I believe that uh, logistics are everything and so part of building a team is finding people that aren't all like you and so we had uh quite a bit of uh thought and effort went into the tent and uh you saw the pictures um uh, we wanted it to be safe. So of course we had hand sanitizers out there. We, we had masks for people that wanted them. We took temperatures and uh, I would, I would say uh, as far as planning goes, having the right people in the right spots. You know, we had, we had uh, one of our uh, volunteers out there that is very friendly and she was the one uh, with the temperature, you know, uh, with the thermometer that was going to be new. So I knew that'd be important to have someone out there that everyone respected and loved. So that went well. And then as they approached the tent, they came to kid check and we had our, our regular kid check person out there who's extremely friendly. Yeah. And, uh, and then we handed out hula hoops. That was how we were going to socially distance. That's and a good so idea. They, yeah. After they kid check, they went and got a hula hoop, got their name in it. And then they went into the actual area in the tent where I had, uh, you know, my uh, most passionate and fun volunteers who just uh, helped them get in place. And so uh, that's kind of what it looked like to come in. Yeah. And how did your leaders respond to that? Do you feel like it was, it helped? I mean, did it help the energy and excitement? Oh, yeah. I think, I think I read something the other day where they said that going back after COVID, a lot of times it's like, restarting like maybe a plant uh -huh. church or just a restart and they said they're yeah. kind of these this is a good opportunity to just think outside the box and do things different so i think everyone loved just something fresh to do and with it being outside we have the music you know loud as people were pulling in the driveway and you know the kids were running to get to the tent and it was just it was just a high energy fun morning i love it i love it um linda thanks so much for sharing your story and y'all next time you're on Facebook, look up the pictures that Linda posted. Just if you go to the Isle of Kidman Facebook group, there's a little search bar. Just type in Linda's name, Linda Loudermilk, and you'll see the pictures. Um, Linda, last, last question as we wrap up. What is one word of encouragement you would give someone who is watching or listening that maybe is just discouraged today as a children's ministry leader? Mm -hmm. Would you just speak a word of encouragement to them? I would say get on your knees a lot and uh, look around a lot, um, lead by example. I mean, your energy is gonna be contagious to other people. And so I'm always looking around over my shoulder, looking for the next person to jump on the team. And I, I think if you have a, a solid team, you know, that's uh, full of creative people and, and they're welcoming, uh, anyone would wanna be part of that team. So. Linda, thanks for joining me on the coffee chat. Right. God bless you guys in that new church plant up in Michigan. Thank you. He has. It's not brand new anymore. It's a few years. But it sounds yeah. like God's really blessing y'all. And let me know if you need anything, Linda. All right. Thanks, Ryan. Thanks so much. Yep. All right. Thank you. What a great coffee chat. What can you do, friends, to 
speak into um, the culture of your ministry and team? What can you do today? Maybe you can send some cards of encouragement, some text messages. You can make some phone calls. You've got to every day and every week be thinking about the culture of my ministry. And yes, so much of your ministry is about the ministry to those kids and families. But you also need to view maybe even equally as important or more is you view yourself as a coach to that team and building into your children's ministry team and making those investments, you never, ever regret it. I know it takes time and it takes work. Friends, it's been a great coffee chat. Thanks so much for joining me. Please go check out globalkidmenday.com. Uh, you can train your entire children's ministry team for just $95. I'm bringing conference quality training to your church. You can either do this live in person where everybody gathers at the church, or you can do this event virtually, but it happens on August the 8th, which is just a little over a month away. Globalkidmenday.com. Friends, thanks for joining me in today's coffee chat. I love these. Look forward to seeing you tomorrow at the same time. God bless.